Okay. Bless the Saints. Uh, this game, I did I did not think it was going to turn out this way. Uh, Leicester, I think, looked great last weekend against Harlequins, but they lacked the execution to kind of finish the game off. And I thought with Northampton Saints playing the way they did against Exeter, just super supercharged rugby, super fast, that Leicester would buckle under that pressure, under that attacking pressure, and uh, they would lose. However, they didn't. They won. And how did they do that? Well... For me, I think Leicester played the perfect game plan to play the rugby that they wanted to. From the very get-go, it was an arm wrestle. It was an arm wrestle in the mud. It wasn't a sprinting race between us and Northampton, which we would never have won. We stifled the ball consistently. Tommy Raphael played great, got over the ball consistently, made sure that there was no quick ball available for Northampton. Uh, the scrums, I don't know what's happened to Joe Hayes. I mean, he looks like he's put on another £10 and his scrummaging has gone through the roof. Uh, he had a really great game uh, and he felt very upset to come off for a scrum where Dan Cole came on and again played well. But I think Leicester in general managed to force Northampton to play the game that they wanted uh, Leicester to play. They kicked the territory, uh, they slowed the ball down and they forced Northampton to try and play out their own half multiple times uh, going against basically a brick wall of a very good defence from Leicester. I think much improved from last week. Uh, even though it wasn't bad last week, it was even better this week. And Saints just ended up stifled. And this is really, really surprising for me. And it, it kind of uh, builds into the whole thing that I've been talking about last week, which was there are like six teams that can win the Premiership this year. And it's all, I think the interesting thing for me over the coming weeks is working out kind of like the rock, paper, scissors between the different Premiership teams, whose strengths and weaknesses kind of match up well against each other's. Um, I think Harlequins, for example, matched up very well against Leicester because... Um, they just had an extra late level of creativeness out of nothing uh, to create space out of nothing that allowed them to beat Leicester. Whereas Northampton, you know what they're going to do, but they're going to be very quick and ram, ram, it, ram, it, ram, it, ram, it, ram it down your throat. Uh, and I think Leicester, because of that predictability in, in not being able to just create magic anywhere, they were much they found it much easier to stifle them. I'm just going to kind of get into the game and, and talk about some various other aspects of it here. Yeah, so the scrum was unclean uh, and Leicester benefited from this. They they managed to consistently get penalties after the first 20 minutes. I think it was like half and half in terms of penalisation. And it, it basically kind of summarised this game in terms of what it was in terms of an arm wrestle. It was just stop starty, uh, get gritty, <laughs> get gritty, do the gritty. Uh, and it just ended up in Leicester's hands in that regard. And it really boiled down to the, the bit the where the, the game was won was... Uh, Leicester going for the corner right at the right time. They were 12-3 up. They had a penalty in, uh, that was very kickable for three points. And instead, they decided to go for the corner. And I thought, wow, that's a big decision. You get another three points here. You're then 15-3. You're 12 points ahead. It's like two scores. Uh, and, you know, and a, and if they don't get both conversions, then they're going to be... Lose, they're still going to be, like, drawing with Leicester, right? So to go for the corner here is a big move. But... Uh, I thought it was like the right decision. The reason being they were dominant, uh, they looked promising in attack, and the scrum was consistently under pressure. They go for the corner. Uh, they, it, it kind of, you know, it collapses, uh, and Northampton under pressure, they get another penalty against them, and they just built consistent pressure. And it wasn't so much that the try that they got at the end um, really sealed it for them. That was kind of the bonus. But they realised that they were dominating Northampton in their pack so much so that they were going to force a yellow at some point, right? Whether it was going to be through the scrum or it was going to be through the line out. Uh, and they actually managed to force two yellows. I mean, the commentary kept calling it the mystery of the missing yellow card, which was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I mean, it was obvious why the second yellow card came. The second yellow card came from consistent pressure at the scrum. Leicester, uh, even, even though uh, Evan Waller came off and his younger brother came on, um, they still managed to send get get him sent off because of uh, the, collapse, the the scrum collapsing once again, which you would think, well, well, it's a new player. Maybe they're getting right. No, I mean, if your scrum is consistently collapsing and you just bring on another player and the same thing happens again, just because it's a new player, you've done it three or four times in a row in the same place, the guy has to come off. And that was really what sealed the game. Um, Northampton looked exciting towards the end. They, looked, they, they scored a couple of tries in quick succession and they made it a bit closer than the game really was. Uh, which I, I've got to note, George Furbank himself, uh, another player I like the look of at the moment, He's uh, he looks like he's put on some weight. 
a little bit, a little bit beefier, uh, which I think is probably what he needed. He was also very, always very quick, but now he's quick and he's got some power and he made some great runs. Uh, both tries, I think, were set up from breaks from him. Uh, it, and it really showed that towards the end of the game, uh, Leicester couldn't have the same stifling defence. And the moment that Northampton had quick ball, they were the better side. But Leicester did just enough to stop that from happening to for allowing Northampton to win the game. So for me, perfect game planning for a Leicester team that I think arguably is less talented than Northampton. Uh, and they really forced them to play the game that they want us to play. Very much reminds me of England, South Africa in the World Cup, right? England, much less talented uh, team. Um, they just force the opposition to play the game that they want to. And it makes them uh, have a much higher chance of winning. In this case, obviously, Leicester won. Obviously, in the World Cup, England lost when doing that. But a uh, really interesting game. And uh, I'm really fascinated to see where this Leicester team goes. Uh, Dan McKellar seems good. You know, he's coming from the ACT Brumbies. Uh, they play a very similar style of rugby. And I think there's always a concern when the new coach comes in. You don't know if he's going to bring the same successes that he had. Obviously, I think he's done a good job with the Brumbies. I mean, they were literally like the only team last year in Super Rugby that managed to make the quarterfinals, I think, or even a semi-final for the Super Rugby. Can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, and it's good to see that he's brought in a culture that I think the players buy into. Um, I think you can see it, that they believe in the game plan. Uh, it, that's the only way they won today is that every, they had total buy-in from all of the players. And this new rehash team uh, looks good. It looks really good on paper. We, we feel, I feel like we've got Andre Pollard playing his best rugby. Fingers crossed he doesn't get another injury. Um, I think there's a couple of things that I want to see a little bit more of. I think, namely, Oli Haskell Collins, superstar last year for London Irish on the other wing from Arndale. Um, and he's struggling to kind of get into the game plan a little bit. I think I'd like to see him do what so many great wingers have done when they've come to Leicester, and that's um, finding spaces for themselves rather than keeping themselves on the wing. We've seen this with so many wingers that have played for Leicester. Uh, Chris Ashton most recently, but Johnny May, uh, Alessandra Tulangi, um, uh, Harry Potter has done this as well before he went off, off to, uh, over to, back to Australia. But really Leicester wingers really come of their own when they stop hanging out on their wing and they start kind of trying to attack in the middle of the field uh, and they kind of go looking for work and that's not a criticism of Haskell Collins he's probably got it so ingrained in himself and so in entrained into his head that he needs to wait for the opportunity on the wing to open up for him to go through it just needs maybe a little bit more coaching I'm, I'm not saying it's someone that doesn't want to do work that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is it's someone who has to adapt to the team that they're playing for's game style I mean, it's typical Leicester, right? I mean, very rarely are we going to go through the phases and go out to the backs and always whip it wide to try and stretch the team out. It's just not what we do. We kick for territory. We attack when the time there is to attack and we trust in our defence. And a winger, uh, you've got to be a very certain type of, type of winger to uh, survive in those instances. And uh, I don't mean in terms of uh, play style. I mean more in terms of what you're doing on the field. And... Uh, you can find real good success playing for a team like that if you go out and look for the opportunities. I'm thinking like on the break, pop, look on for the inside channel from the fly half or um, uh, loop round and cut through the middle of the field in terms of just creating an extra man in the, in the centre of the field. There's opportunities there. Um, it's just kind of going from the mindset of a London Irish team that was like, you know, flinging all over the place, champagne rugby, um, and instead kind of being uh, more kind of attacking opportunities that are there. But that's it. That's uh, that's my analysis of the game. Great victory for Leicester. So.